to the next Edge of Hero podcast. I'm Kirk Konecki, the CEO, Superintendent of Indian Hill, and I'm here with Ava Buffeta and RJ Poffenberger. What a day to have you two Braves here with me. I got a junior and a senior. Next 20 minutes, we're going to dive into this. R RJ, we got to talk about state tennis. Um, we got to talk about cross country. You are like a decorated state champion here at the table this morning. Ava and I are really excited. Yeah. But can you tell us, with all the accolades that have come along with this, I, I've been able to observe you for a couple years now as a competitor. Like, what do those things mean to you when you get done with the seasons and they're kind of over? Like, you've had a couple days to reflect now that cross country's over. What's the experience mean to you as a competitor? Um, well, I've had the opportunity to compete at the state tennis tournament and also the state cross country tur tournament, like our meet. And it's just been a great experience being able to do that as an Indian Hill Brave in different sports and different years of my high school career. And then like after having done it, like after having competed in the cross country meet last weekend, it's just really cool to like reflect and uh, just think about how much I've done as a Brave and how much I've accomplished as an athlete here. A lot of time, a lot of hours, right? Um, you got to develop a routine with that, right? So. What's like your go-to fuel food uh, when you need to re-energize or like do you have like a pre-game meal and a post-game kind of ritual that you go through when it comes to like refueling your body with all this stuff you do? Um, when it comes to tennis, I don't really have anything specific that I like um, eat like routinely, but when for cross country, I try to eat pasta. We do pasta parties with our team um, every Friday before meet and it's a great it's just a great time to be together with our team. It's also some great food. We always eat pasta. So that is kind of how I do that. And then Saturday morning prior to cross country meets, I always eat uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal. That's my go-to. <laughs> cinnamon Toast Crunch, I get you going. Yeah. Carb load, a little sugar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it great. It works perfect. So it does. When I was in high school, we used to always have the pasta meal uh, in the afternoon, a day before a game, right? It became mm -hmm. like a social ritual that was so important just to be together as a team. Yeah. The food was good, but I mean, that was what was really cool about it because we had a lot of fun together. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you guys have built that, and it looks like from watching our cross-country program the last two years in the boys' track, you guys have really bonded. Yeah. Yeah, we've got group. this year we had a huge group of kids. I mean, compared to the last couple of years, I think we had like 30 kids, which is tremendous for just a like for cross country. I mean, it's kind of an obscure sport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ava, when you see someone like RJ competing and then you hear about like all his accolades, right? Like yeah. whether you run in the same social circles all the time or not probably isn't the question. The question is like, what do those things mean to other students as Braves when you know that you're sitting next to a multiple state champ? Yeah. How's that resonate with you? I mean, I like, it makes me re feel really proud to go here because I'm like, oh my gosh, like obviously we have really impressive athletes and everything. And I know like my brother's friends with him. And so like, I like to see, like I know my brother's probably happy for him. So it's like, it just makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that joy and that school yeah. spirit kind of then resonates with people, yeah. right? One of the things I've noticed about your class, your grade level, and the seniors this year is it seems like our school spirit has bubbled up and this kind of like coordinated effort to support the other teams and support different clubs yeah. and activities and show up for each other. Yeah. Where do you think that's coming from? Because I think your grade level is helping to push a lot of that, and yeah. I also think the seniors are. I would say like a lot of people are friends throughout different grades and like, everyone's close in their own sports and so seeing other people like I have a lot of friends on the tennis team so like when I saw the tennis team go to um for the girls go to state it was like I was really proud of them and like I was wishing them the best you know when they went to compete so I feel like everyone's just like pushing each other to be the best and like you know supporting them how does that happen socially now in schools I think a lot of people who are adults and parents right when yeah. they leave school they don't usually step back in so like things have changed with technology and things have changed with apps and then figuring mm -hmm. out your weekend schedule and what it's going to be like. Yeah. How do you guys all decide like, hey, we're all showing up for the boys soccer game tomorrow night? Like what happens? I mean, like I would say like my friend would text me and be like, do you want to go to this game? And I'd be like, yeah. And then you would drive together to go to a game or something and you just make it like what you do on a Friday night, you know? And is it like the group chat and yeah. everybody says, hey, show up here? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a kind of a different phenomenon, right, that has developed with technology and the way kids your age communicate yeah. growing up. A lot of it's electronic exchange and say, hey, meet us here, or let's all go here first, and then we'll bop somewhere else. You, yeah. you couldn't do that when I was growing yeah. up, right? It was a little different. 
Ava, you're a competitor in your own right. And academically, like I think people look to you, including your teachers, and they're like, boy, she competes in a different way, but it's really spectacular. And I think it's what a lot of people expect out of an Indian Hill student. Talk about our Latin program a little bit and your experience in Latin specifically. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose Latin? What is it that you're getting back out of it? And, and your, yeah. your, maybe your interplay with your teachers, what is it that makes you so passionate about wanting to learn that? Um, I really enjoy Latin. I took it like sixth grade when you first had to start taking it. And I mean, I chose it because I think I heard it was like the easiest class to take. And I mean, that's why I took it. And but like I've kept with it because I do enjoy it. And like I enjoy the teachers a lot because I had Mrs. Burgess my freshman year and then you switch off with like Mr. Atwood and I have Mrs. Burgess again. So like I really enjoy having her as a teacher. She's like one of my favorite teachers. And it's just like an interesting class to take because it is like a dead language, but it's like it's helped me in other classes because words from Latin kind of like connect back to like English words now. So it's like it helps me in other classes. It connects to everything, right? Yeah. And it connects to career pathways. Yeah. And so when you say dead language, I laugh because yeah. I think, well, no, Latin is alive in everything, right? Yeah. And I think that's what your teachers mm -hmm. go over with you. Um, what about the experiences around being a part of the Latin program that you've been able to take part in? What would you say about that? I mean, I know that they have like Latin pumpkin painting mm -hmm. for um, in October and they do that. And then there's also for Latin club you can go to different conventions and like make different project, um, projects and things like did that. Did you do some of the simulation and activity stuff where you did like the dress up and the reenactments when you were in middle school? I used to, yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah. And I think our, our Latin department is, is a great group of people, but getting to have a teacher like Miss mm -hmm. Burgess twice, yeah, that's an experience not a lot of students yeah, get, right? Exactly. So you get to build a little different relationship. Yeah. Yeah, she, you can tell, like, we had a sub once, and she went out, of the, um, and Mrs. Burgess was, like, in the building, but she came back and was talking to us when we were taking a quiz, and after she left, the sub was like, I can tell you guys all have, like, a really close re relationship with her, because she's had everyone in that room, like, twice at least, yeah. some of them three times. And, and that's pretty special when you're going through world language classes to have the same instructor again. Yeah. Um, it's different than other kinds yeah. of programs. Uh, RJ, you've had uh, the same coaches for a long time now, right? And I think about Wade and uh, as a coach, you know, you've been around the same person for a long time. What do you take away from that and those relationships, like from your perspective? Yeah, it's um, well, when it comes to cross country, I've had Coach Savage all four years, and I've also had her as a teacher sophomore year for chemistry. And it's just been a great experience to just. Be with her so much She's what she taught you specifically like if you had to point to one or two things that you say this is a takeaway if you work with her you're gonna learn this um, just running cross country I would say it's just so much about working hard and every single practice you're pushing yourself to the limit every single meet you're pushing yourself to the limit and she's just able to get us there and get us able to just work hard and just be our best selves and that work compete. ethic yeah what about what about Wade? What's funny about working with Wade, or what do you take away working with him as a tennis coach? You, this is a guy who leads both our men's and women's program, mm -hmm. which I think makes him a pretty flexible uh, head coach. But yeah. what what is the difference in the conversation with him versus Coach Savage? Um, Wade, um, just like we have a smaller tennis team, so it's more intimate. I feel like we've had the same six or seven kids since freshman, senior year. And so our team, like, we're really close, and Wade, um, Wade recognizes that, and we always, like, we'll have team meals. Wade will come sometimes, or just Wade is just is able to um, just, like, let our bond just, like, do well and let us compete as a team together and just do well. <laughs> There's a little difference between right when you're you're working with your cross country coach and then you actually start your event, finish your event. It's mm -hmm. timed and you're going after a PR and a team finish. When you're in a tennis match and you're playing high level tennis, right? It's more of a, a consulting as you're going through the match. Yeah. Um, how much assistance are you getting outside of practice when you're in the match from Coach Ward? Um, for me, I feel like, I mean, I've played tennis since I was eight years old and I've played at a really competitive level my whole life. So I'm, I'm pretty like, good, I'm pretty good at tennis. And so I know like what I'm doing wrong in a match, like what I'm doing right. But when like I talk to Wade or Coach Walter, um, they just kind of tell me just simple things what I'm doing wrong or right. And then also just to like keep my head up and stay cool during a match because tennis is a really frustrating sport. And a lot of emotional hard. approach and strategy kind of like to control your own, your own behavior and your own yeah. psyche. 
-hmm. Yeah, I, I think those are like flexible, lifelong skills, right, that you can take from someone in that relationship and use in anything mm -hmm. when you move on. Yeah. Ava, if you had to point to a teacher or two that have impacted you at Indian Hill, that, mm -hmm. that you know, hey, there's a takeaway here, this person taught me A, B, C, would you point to one or two? Who would you point out? Um, I think I would point out Mrs. Schaefer because I've had, she's like helped with student government and um, I've like done that freshman or sophomore through junior year. Mm -hmm. And um, she's just always like taught me like about school spirit. Like she always wants me to have good school spirit, always be like supporting um, like other students and like always just trying my best, I feel like. That's great. And yeah. Why do you think that's important? For Indian Hill? Yeah, for the well, for you well, to show support for your colleagues. I mean, you're a busy person. You're involved in lots of stuff. Yeah. You have your own classes, your own life. But, like, why does that rub off on you that, like, when she's talking to you about that why and that importance, why does it matter to you? Um, it's just, like, it makes me feel better, like, showing school spirit and, like, I have more fun when I'm at school, I feel like. And, um, like, pep rallies, I really enjoy, like, helping with the pep rallies and, um, just making those fun because like that's like a whole school event so it like just brings the whole school together I feel like yeah um, when you guys think back to when you were little Braves yeah was there a teacher that like sticks out in your mind where you're like oh I'm always gonna remember that one I, I had Mrs. Tice for second grade and um, we went down to the like the elementary schools for their pep rally for homecoming and I saw her and like I just gave her a big hug like I was just She's someone that I'll always remember just because I just had like such a close bond with her, I feel like, and I don't know, like that's just someone I remember. That that homecoming activity I think is fun too when we it, get yeah. to see the high school students with the little braves, like it's great, but that emotion of seeing to your teachers, yeah. that that's pretty cool. Yeah. What about you, RJ? You think of one that sticks out in your mind? Um, I honestly cannot. I <laughs> don't have that great of a memory. <laughs> I don't really remember any of their like names or anything. <laughs> Well, as you move through, I think what's interesting is, right, when you leave school and you move to the next level, like, we're always talking about once and always a brave, and we want you to, like, remember some of these great experiences, and I think over time it ends up becoming the people you're having the experiences with. Yeah. Um, Ms. Tice, Coach Ward, you know, Coach Savage, like, those are great things that'll stick with you the rest of your life. Let's talk about the high school specifically. There's a lot of things that have changed and are going on programmatically in schools today that weren't going on before. I mean, it used to be you came, you take your AP classes, you take your advanced classes, you, you pick the content, maybe you take a couple electives, you're trying to get ready for the next level in college. You guys are both kind of into that now, mm -hmm. right? Um, but now we're hearing about things like computer science and emerging industries and yeah. AI and how it's changing the world yeah. and robotics and engineering and then like high finance and entrepreneurship and career paths, you know, your principals doing these yeah. things where you guys are bringing it. How does that make you think about like what you want for the future and what you're trying to accomplish for yourself to get to the next level? Like what do you want to do, Ava, and do we have the programming in place to help you do it? Yeah, so me personally, I want to go into something like business related. And I know with like the new experience ships thing with Miss Silvius, it's like I went to the business at breakfast thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really impactful for me because it just showed me like all these other successful people and like also different things that I could possibly want to do with my career and like my future. And so that was really eye opening and like it was really helpful too, just to learn more. And I think that these programs are really helpful, for sure. What about you, RJ? Like, what are you into? What is it that, you know, do you feel like we got the right programming in place to help prepare you for what you want to do? Mm -hmm. I want to go into business in college, and we have DECA, which I haven't, I'm doing DECA this year. I haven't really done it in the past, but I'm going to do DECA this year, which should hopefully mold me into a better businessman. And Explain then Explain what that is for our listeners, okay. just so they know. DECA is like a business competition like it's like a competition involving business strategies and ideas and you compete against other schools and you go to state and there's nationals honestly i don't have that great of an idea what it is because i've never done it up until this year but you're trying it now yeah and you think it's going to be something that can help distinguish or prepare you a little bit along the way mm -hmm. i think that's what's important about a lot of programs and clubs and activities or the languages you take is right yeah. if you are willing to step outside yourself and try something you might be able to take some benefit from it that then ultimately helps you build your own resume, distinguish yourself amongst some really competitive peers. Ava, you're a junior, you got another year, but like, 
yeah. you're into this idea now where right you're kind of starting to think about the transition mm -hmm. the next step of your life and and how does that how do you think about the competition of showcasing your own brand and your own self for what you want to do next or where you might want to go to school or what job you might like do you feel that pressure in that competition yeah I mean I would say I feel some pressure just because I feel like I'm always trying to do something that will like make me stand out or like just try and do all these different activities or something that I can like say that I did and like enjoy doing them and I mean yeah like it can be stressful at times but it's like I enjoy it do, does it ever get so competitive that it's like changed relationships for you? Um, or are you able to kind of like step aside and go, okay, this isn't that important? Or like, how do you how do you navigate that with your peers in high school? I think just like finding what I enjoy most and sticking with it, and things that I don't really enjoy as much, or like take up too much time, and I just don't find it like benefiting me. Like I won't do it anymore. So you're putting your time and your yeah. priority into what matters most. Yeah. Okay. That's a good approach, I think, right? Yeah. And you can be proactive that way. Mm -hmm. RJ, you you seem to me to be someone who deals with a lot of pressure competitively all the time, mm -hmm. right? So then I'm sure with school also there's that pressure to succeed and perform and push yourself. How do you look at the competition and the pressure to set yourself up for success? Like, what, How do you process that? Um, I mean, Indian Hills is a really competitive school. We have a lot of smart kids. And like when you apply to a college, I mean, like, a couple like if you bought a competitive college only they'll only accept like two or three kids from your school so you kind of know you're competing against people but when it like for me I don't really think that I'm like competing against people I kind of just it is what it is like I get my score they get their scores I'm not like I don't really go it deep into like that really you're competing for yourself yeah and I think you're in sports where you're kind of on a team but you're also competing for your own PR mm -hmm. you're trying to get your best mm -hmm. so how do you know that you're getting the best out of yourself like what do you do to evaluate yourself as you go along as a student um i mean for me I, the goal is always just to get a's because that's i mean that's should be that's my goal because that pretty much is the best i could do so i just try to get a's in pretty much every class and just score well on tests and just complete my homework do tests well how do you manage the time with all the activities you two are involved in like rj you've had a, a lot of extra time outside of school, right? Like, so what's the routine become for you to make sure that you can do all that? I mean, for me, I've kind of, I've done, I've a lot of extracurriculars with tennis and cross country. And so that's kind of been my main priority like after school. But then once I finish all that, I go home and I do all my homework, I study for my test and I do that until I go to bed. And that's, I mean, I always, for me, I think that academics are first like if I if I have too much school work I'll skip tennis practice or I'll skip cross-country practice and I'll get it done so you mean you're not going home from school and like getting on the Game Boy and um, doing group chats until one in the morning and watching social media and TikToks for five hours you're actually you actually have a routine where you yeah. study yeah I in middle school I used to like get on the PlayStation after school but in high school I've like I've have not been on my PlayStation in like two years. I never use it. I've It'd be kinda, nice to, right? But yeah, you're busy. Yeah, I've set I've set some good habits, and I feel like I accomplish everything I need to do. I, I think that's the key, right? Is you you've developed good habits, and that routine helps you in the mm -hmm. long run to keep up all that stuff that you're doing, which is really intense at times. Yeah. Uh, that time management, Ava. Uh, getting your driver's license, right? Yeah. Getting out. There's all these like rites of passage you go through where yeah. these things like attack how you use time. Yeah. What do you do to try to create that balance um, so that you're staying on point with what you want to do? Um, I think for me, it's just like utilizing my weekends because obviously I want to sleep in and like take breaks, but like sometimes I just have to like wake up and like get my work done and like I don't know. Like I tell myself like if I work hard, play hard, kind of thing. Like if I work hard, I can just then I have the time to do what I, I want. knew I was like, gonna like you Ava like that's my <laughs> mantra in life work hard play hard yeah. right so I asked him before like when you need a break right or you're like hey I got a craving for something like what's your go-to like I gotta go get my fix like what are you eating what do you what's your snack of, of choice Ooh, um I think for me just going to like graders with my friends or going to skyline I enjoy doing that but, like at my house I'll just like probably ice cream or something are you like one of these cincy skyline people that has like a regular routine where you gotta no. like have your fix every week or is it every now and then it's just every now and then i mean after like football games obviously if we win i'll always go um with my like cheer team and that's always fun but yeah yeah so 
let's kind of wrap this up with a little more general question. I want you to think about like five years from now, right? You're, you're getting done with your undergrad, wherever the heck that's going to be. And you've accomplished some of your own personal goals. When you look back, what's going to be the thing that sticks out in your mind about being a brave that was like, boy, that was the, that was the experience. That's what mattered to me. Or that, that was the fun thing that I'm always going to like kind of, that's going to pop up in my mind first. What, what would that be for you, Ava, if you had to, to pick it right now? Mine is probably always going to be um, Friday, Friday Night Lights, like football games. I think I'm always going to think back and just like remember those nights and like what I did and like what I did after the games, like going to Skyline. But like, just like cheering on like the Braves and like the football team, like on the sideline is always going to be like one of my favorite Brave things. Nation, yeah. fireworks. It's always so Undefeated fun. CHL yeah. champs this year. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, RJ? Um, for me, I think that athletics are pretty much defined by a high school career. I've won two state titles in tennis, and I've gone to state championship twice in cross country. And I feel like just stuff, looking back, I'll always reflect on those times, just competing and winning. And that, that close group of friends that you've probably developed, right, that mm -hmm. you've spent like hundreds and hundreds of hours with. Yeah. <laughs> you know everything about each other. and Yeah. yeah. So what's next on the horizon for you? Let's start with you, RG, because you're closer to graduation here. I mean, it's, it's going to be here before you know it. I know you're trying to sink it all in, but what should we be looking out for you to be doing for the next couple of years? Have you decided? Um, I have not decided. I've applied, to, I applied to 15 schools, and I think I'll find out it's between now and January, late January. And so I want to study business, and I, I don't want to stay in Ohio, so I'll, I will not be in Ohio. You want to get a, a little change? Yeah. A venue? Uh-huh. Far enough, but close enough to come back home when you feel the need? Uh, I think my parents are going <laughs> to move out of Cincinnati. Oh, so wow, okay. I don't know. I don't, I'm not that close, I don't think. Okay. Just, just see. Well, we'll look forward to seeing where you land, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm certain if you attack it with the same ferocity that you have the last couple of years, um, you have been, I've been like a fanboy watching you play sports, yeah. has been like one of the great joys of my job. Whenever I know something's going on with tennis and I can get out and go see RJ compete, like that made my day. Um, and kudos to you for all of your accolades. You have had an amazing career here as a student athlete, and I know that you, you kick butt in the classroom too. So Thank kudos you. to you. Uh, Ava, again, okay. think ahead now. Five years from yeah. now, like what? What are we gonna? What are we gonna see you doing? Um, I mean, I'm not sure. Like, hopefully, I'll be making money. You know? <laughs> yeah. Who fun, doesn't want to like, do that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not sure yet. But like, just applying to college next year. You know? You think the experience ships will help you decide as much what you don't want to do yeah, as maybe what sure. you might want to do, or help you narrow the choices? Yeah. Like I've definitely realized, like finance and like accounting for business like that's not something I want to do because just numbers and math I'm like no but like um you're gonna find your talent yeah. and use it in a different way yeah exactly yeah I mean that's the exciting part and I hope you lean into that and yeah. again like when I hear RJ say you applied for 15 schools right there's all these possibilities in your mind what your universe could look like right now and I think the goal is right how can we help you at Indian Hill narrow the field a little bit yeah. and help you take some of the skills and talents you want to take with you and then ultimately you get to make the best choices for yourself yeah. listen they say once and always a brave doesn't matter where you, you end up buddy we're gonna stay in touch yeah. um, and you can always come home again and I think when you are here at home you got to make the climate and the spirit as awesome as possible for brave nation so I hope that you two continue to do that this year with yeah. both your classes. That's one of the reasons I wanted you here today. Um, I think what you're involved in academically is awesome, and I think what you're helping do with school spirit and climate is awesome with your peers. Keep doing good work, and thanks mm -hmm. for being here on the Edge of Hero podcast today. Yeah, thank you for having thank us. You.